All right, test review. Here we go. Find sine of 195 degrees. You are looking for two angles on your unit circle, somewhere on your unit circle here, that add up to be uh, 195 degrees. Okay, and so you're going to use a sum or difference um, identity for that. So please make sure on your formula sheet that you have your identities, you have your unit circle, and you have your Pythagorean triples, okay? So um, the two uh, angles that I'm going to use that add up to 195 are going to be sine of 135 plus 60, okay? So that means then that little a is going to be 135, big B is going to be 60, and here we go. I'm writing out my sine of uh, sine my sum identity for sine, sorry, thank you. Okay, so it's going to be sine of little a, which is 135, cosine of big B, which is 60, plus cosine of little a, which is 135, sine of big B, which is 60. Now I just fill in what these are equal to, so sine of 135, that is root 2 over 2, Cosine of 60, x value, that's going to be 1 half. Again, you can be using your calculator for this. Okay, cosine of 135, negative root 2 over 2. Again, this is all coming from the inner circle. Or use your calculator, make sure it's in degrees. And then sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. And so our final answer then will be root 2 minus root 6 over 4. Okay. Next one here. We're in, we're in radians. I would change this to degrees to make it easier. So we're going to multiply it by 180 over pi. That's how you go from radians to degrees. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and multiply those together and let's see what I get here. Sorry, I don't have it prepared ahead of time to key. So 17 pi over 12 using my calculator times 180 over pi and that's going to be 255. So I have now cosine of 2 55. And so when I think about this, okay, sum or uh, difference identity, a lot easier to do with sum identity if you can. Okay, and so I'm going to go cosine of 255. I'm going to say, let's do cosine of 225 plus 30. And so that means then that little a is going to be 225, big B 30. And so now write out your sum identity for cosine. You're going to get this. You're going to get cosine of little a, which is 225, cosine of big B, which is 30, minus, remember this identity, it's minus, it's opposite for cosine, the sine in the middle there, the plus, sine of little a, which is 225, sine of big B, which is 30. Again, you can use your unit circle for this next part, okay, or... You can look at your, you can use your calculator, okay, which is in degrees. Cosine of 225, that is going to be equal to negative root 2 over 2 times cosine of 30, which is root 3 over 2, minus sine of 225, which is negative root 2 over 2 as well. Sorry, I don't mean to be moving the sheet of paper. Negative root 2 over 2 times sine of 30, which is 1 half. And so if you add all of those in your calculator, you end up getting this. You end up getting negative root 6 plus root 2 over 4. And there you go. That's your fun. That should be your final answer there.
All right, now these next ones is where we're going to have to draw some triangles. Okay, some triangles to solve. So the first thing we need to understand is, is first off, what quadrant are we going to be in here for A? So for little a, we're going to be in quadrant pi over 2 to pi. That's going to be quadrant 2. Okay, big B, we're going to be in quadrant 4. Okay, and then what I also want to do is, is instead of having secant here, I want to find out what cosine is. So they are reciprocals of each other, so then cosine of big B, you're just flipping them, would be 5 over 13. Okay, so now we know sine of little a, cosine of big B, so let's write out what we know. Okay, so remember my identity for cosine of a minus b is this. It's cosine of little a, cosine of big B, plus sine little a, sine of big B. Okay, so I'm going to fill in what I know. All right, so what did it give me? It gave me sine of little a. So that right here is going to be a four-fifths. And then cosine of big B, which is 5 over 13. So the problem is, is I don't know cosine of little a and sine of big B. So what I have to do is I have to draw a triangle for both. So here's little a first off. Okay, little a is in quadrant 2. So how we get to quadrant 2 is we go left, up, down. Remember, little a is closest to the origin, which is where we came from. That's a right triangle. And so what do I know about sine? Remember, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. That means my opposite side is 4. My hypotenuse is 5. This is a Pythagorean triple. It's going to be negative 3 because in quadrant 2, the x value okay, is negative. Again, think about it. You went left and then up. Left associates negative. So now what do I need to know with little a? I need to know cosine of little a. So cosine of little a is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and so I'm going to get a negative 3 over 5, and so wherever there's a cosine of a, I'm going to plug in a negative 3 over 5. Okay? Now I need to do my triangle for big B, which big B is in quadrant 4. So how do we get to quadrant 4? We go right, and then down. And so we'll draw that big B in the corner there, where we came from, from the origin. All right? And what do we know about big B? We know cosine of big B. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 5, 13. Okay, and so again, this is a Pythagorean triple. This is going to be a negative 12, though, because you went down. Please make sure you know your signs. You make your signs correct. If you mess up your signs, it's going to mess up the whole problem. So now I need to find what? I need to find sine of big B, which we know sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and so you're going to do a negative 12 over 13. And so where there's a sine of big B, I now replace that with a negative 12 over 13. Okay, I'm then going to use my calculator here to plug it in. So parentheses, fraction, negative, well, negative, negative before it goes up there, 3 over 5. Close parentheses, open parentheses, fraction, 5 over 13 plus sign in between there, open parentheses fraction button, 4 over 5, close parentheses, open parentheses, negative sign, fraction button, 12 over 13, close parentheses, hit enter, and there you go. So you got a negative 63 over 65. So this equals a negative 63 over 65. Okay? Alright, so now we want to do tan A minus B. So recall what that formula is. That is tan A minus tan big B all over 1 plus tan A tan of big B. Okay? So I need to do again two triangles. Here's little a. Okay, we know. Well, actually, we already draw drew the triangles. So why redo that again? Let's just go over here and let's find tangent for little a. 
because that's what I need. I obviously don't have any parts of tangent. Sorry, this, I wrote it as TA, that should be TAN, big B. Okay, so I, I already have the triangles drawn, so why draw them again, right? So what is tangent? If you remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tangent of A is negative 4 over 3. Tangent of big B, again, opposite over adjacent. So tangent of big B is equal to a negative 12 over 5. So now let's go ahead and let's just plug that in. So it's going to look like this. You're going to get negative 4 over 3 minus negative 12 over 5 all over, okay, all over 1 plus negative 4 over 3 negative 12 over 5. So let's go ahead, let's plug that in our calculator. So this one's a little tricky, that's what I'm going to show you here, fraction button, okay, uh, parentheses, negative sign, fraction button, 4 over 3, close parentheses, actual minus button now instead of a negative, okay, minus, parentheses, fraction button, no, oh, not a negative up there, put a negative to the side of it, negative, 12 over 5, close parentheses, okay, 1 plus, open parentheses here, negative sign, fraction button, 4 over 3, close parentheses, open parentheses, negative sign, fraction button, 12 over 5, close parentheses, there you go, that looks really crazy confusing, but hit enter, and there we go, that's our answer right there. So your answer should be 16 over 63. Okay, um, given that sine theta is equal to 8 over 17, and theta has its terminal side in quadrant 2, okay, we're going to find sine 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, and tan 2 theta, okay, so um, again, I need to draw a triangle here, and I only know sine theta, I need to find out cosine theta and tangent theta, so I can use it all in their formula here, okay, so it says our triangle falls in quadrant 2, so we're going to go way over here, okay, and draw our triangle, so how do we draw a triangle in quadrant 2 again, you go left, up, and then connect, we'll put theta in the corner here, this again is a right triangle, we know sine, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so 8 over 17. This is, again, a Pythagorean triple. Please write your triples down on your formula sheet. And so this is going to be a negative 15. 8, 15, 17. Okay, 8, 15, 17. Which I just want to make sure that is correct. I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. Yep, sorry, just a long day. And so I just want to make sure I knew that. So now we have our triangle. Let's go ahead here now and find cosine theta. So cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's negative 15 over 17. And then tangent theta, opposite over adjacent. And so that's going to equal a negative 8 over 15. So now that we know that, we can go ahead here now and find the rest. So recall it wants us to find sine 2 theta. So recall sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta, cosine theta. So now I'm going to take that 2, keep it there, and then I'm going to replace sine theta with what was given to me, 8 over 17, times cosine theta, which I just found to be negative 15 over 17. And so when I plug that into my calculator, as I see that there, 2 times parentheses, yeah, I mean, you guys know how to do it. I'm not going to explain it all. So let me just do that real quick. And so now when I do that, I hit enter. I'm going to be left with negative 240 over 289. Okay, cosine of 2 theta. Now, um, since I already know, since I already know sine, well actually, that's fine, we know cosine right now. So for cosine 2 theta, you have three options, okay? 
I'm going to use 2 cosine, sorry, my handwriting, 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Okay, um, just because I got it, that's what I got stuck in my head. Okay, and so I'm going to go 2. Okay, plug in for what you got for cosine theta, which we got is negative 15 over 17 to the second power minus 1. So just plug that in as you see that. So you're going to go 2, parentheses, fraction button, negative 15 over 17, close parentheses, hit the exponent button, put a 2 up there, scroll over to get it down back to where it's normal size and then subtract one so it should look like this guys in your calculator. You'd enter and there you go you got 161 over 289. Okay now when you already have to find sine 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, the easiest formula to use for tan 2 theta is your quotient identity which is going to give you sine 2 theta over cosine 2 theta. Okay, and so when we do that and we plug in, what do we get for sine 2 theta? We got negative 240 over 289 all over cosine 2 theta, which we just found to be 161 over 289. And so when you do keep, change, flip, keep the numerator, you flip it, 289's are going to can't the uh, 289's are going to cancel out and you're going to be left with this negative 240 over 161 and there you go so there is sine 2 theta cosine 2 theta tangent to theta okay all right so let's to the back now we're doing a lot of uh, solving here Okay, so this one it says solve um, each equation for 0 to 2 pi. So again, recall, that means my answer needs to be in radians. Okay, my answer needs to be in radians. So um, what I'm going to do is it looks like everything is isolated to one side. So I'm going to say let cosine theta equal, or I'm going to say, sorry, not that way, I'm going to say let x equal cosine theta. Now guys, when you're doing these, okay, you need to have your identities, you need to have your unit circle next to you, okay? So what that's going to do is, is now that's going to give me now 4x squared minus 3 equals 0. Okay, I'm going to add the 3. Now that gives me 4x squared equals 3, divide by 4. And now that's going to give me x squared equals 3 over 4. Okay, I'm going to square root now both sides. And so when I do that, I'm now going to be left with this. I'm going to have now x equals plus or minus root 3 because the square root of 3 cannot be simplified. Okay, it's like 2 something, I don't remember, 2.3 maybe, 2.2, I don't really, it doesn't really matter, okay? And then now what's the square root of 4? 2. Okay, so x is equal to plus or minus 2. So now what we're going to do is, is we're going to change x back to cosine theta. So I want to know where cosine theta is equal to root 3 over 2, and where cosine of theta equals a negative root 3 over 2. Okay, and so... Um, That is going to be using our unit circular. Now again, we're answering in radians, right? So root 3 over 2. So I'm looking for ordered pairs, okay, where the x value is a positive root 3 over 2. Remember, cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. So in quadrant 1, root 3 over 2, that is at 30 degrees. So in radians, that's pi over 6. Okay, in quadrant 4, root 3 over 2 is positive. Um, root 3 over 2 is at 330 degrees. In quadrant 4, which is 11 pi over 6. Okay. Now, where is cosine theta equal to negative root 3 over 2? Well, obviously, positive was quadrants 1 and 4, so negative is going to be quadrants 2 and 3. 
in quadrants two, what in quadrant two, where is the negative root three over two? That's at five pi over six. And then where in quadrant three? That's at two ten, which is seven pi over six. And so there you go, there's your answer right there. Okay. All right, so this first one here, number seven, okay, um, right away, there's really nothing I can do. I look at tan squared theta, and I think to myself, Pythagorean identity there? No, because that has to do with uh, secant. Okay, so that, uh, that doesn't work there. Okay, that's secant squared x minus one, so it doesn't help me. So what I'm gonna do is, is I think I'm good to go. Okay, I'm gonna start changing those, so I'm gonna say let y equal sine theta, and then I'm going to say let t equal tan theta, okay? And so um, now what is that going to look like? So it's going to be y t squared equals y, okay? I'm thinking that because I've got two different types of undefined variables, y and, and t squared here, I need to move this y over to the left side, so I'm going to subtract it, and that's now going to give me this. I'm going to have y t squared minus y equals zero. Okay, we can go ahead now and we can factor out a y here. So that's going to give me this. It's going to be y on the outside, and now t squared minus one equals zero. So now let's go ahead there and set everything equal to zero. So we're going to get y equals zero, and we're going to get t squared minus one equals zero, which I need to go ahead and solve for now, the t part. So add one. And so then you got t squared equals one, square root both sides. And so you're going to find out that t is equal to plus or minus one. So I don't have a ton of room here, but I should be able to still make this work. So we're going to change y back to sine. So I want to know where sine theta equals zero. I also change t back to tan theta. I want to know where tangent theta equals a positive one and where a tangent theta equals a negative one. Okay, so we got our unit circle again in radians. Okay, and so we're looking for sine zero, so that's a y value where you get zero. And so that's gonna occur at zero degrees, which is zero radians or zero rads. It also is gonna occur at 180 degrees, which in radians is pi. Okay. Um, and so Tangent of theta, where is that equal to one? Well, that occurs, we talked about our 45 families. Tangent is positive in one and three. So that is gonna occur at pi over four and five pi over four. And then tangent theta of negative one. Tangent's negative in quadrants two and four. Again, that comes in the 45 family. And so the 45 family in quadrant two is 135 or three pi over four. And then the 45 family in quadrant four, which is also negative, tangent is in quadrant four, is seven pi over four, and there you go. So I know that's a little tight down there, but I ran out of room. So that's really the best I, uh, I could do there. Okay. All right, next one here. Okay, next one here we have um, number eight, which is two cosine squared theta plus three cosine theta minus one, okay? Um, I see, first thing I wanna do here is, it looks like I've got everything written in cosine, so I'm gonna write everything in terms of a polynomial equation now, so we're gonna say let x equal cosine theta, so that's gonna give you this, that's gonna give you two x squared plus three x, equals a negative one. I see two different types of undefined variables. So I think I need to move everything over to one side, set equal to zero and factor it. 
And so I'm going to have 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. Star method here because this is a trinomial. And so when I do that, I'm going to do a times c, which is 2. Remember, a times c, which is 2. b3, a2, and 2. And so I need two numbers that multiply to give me 2 that add to equal 3, and that's going to be 2 and 1. So when you write out your factors, it's going to be tight, and you're going to get um, x plus 1. 2 over 2 is 1 here, and then x plus 1 half equals 0. Again, we are not asking for the proper factors. So you know have to take that denominator for the 1 half and kick it in front. We're just going to go up here, and we're going to set those both equal to 0. So we're going to have x plus 1 equals 0, and x plus 1 half equals 0. And so I'm going to find out that x equals a negative 1, because you subtract the 1, and you subtract the 1 half, and negative 1 half. So now we change that x back to cosine theta. And so I want to know where cosine of theta equals negative 1. And I want to know where cosine of theta equals a negative 1 half. OK. And so um, where is that at? We're looking at, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my unit circle here. And I see cosine theta. So I'm looking for an order pair where the x value is equal to negative 1. That occurs at one spot there and that is at 180 degrees which in radians is pi. And then where is negative 1 half? Well cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3 so the x value that has a negative 1 half in quadrant 2 is 120 degrees or in radians 2 pi over 3. And then quadrant 3 where do I get a negative 1 half? That is going to occur at 4 pi over 3. And so there you go. So that's your answer for number 8. Okay, cotangent square theta minus cosecant theta minus 1. Okay, I see the square here. It's cotangent square theta. I'm thinking Pythagorean identity. And so cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta minus 1 minus cosecant theta minus 1 equals 0. Okay, We're going to draw the parentheses and combine our like terms and so when I do that I'm going to get now cosecant squared theta okay, uh, minus cosecant theta and then negative 1 minus 1 is a minus 2 equals 0. Okay. We're now going to go ahead and change cosecant theta to a variable. So I'm just going to say let c equal cosecant of theta. And so that's going to give you this. You're going to get now, you're going to get um, c squared minus c minus 2 equals 0. Because I need room here, guys, I'm going to go star method right here. I know it's going to be little. Sorry, but running out of room. Okay, a times c, so 1 times negative 2 is a negative 2, b, negative 1, a, 1, and 1. So give me two numbers that multiply. To give me negative 2 that adds equal negative 1, that's going to be negative 2, positive 1. Negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. And so now I'm going to go out here and write out my factors. So that's going to give me Okay, negative 2 over 1, that's going to give me c minus 2. And then 1 over 1, c plus 1 equals 0. So I'll go ahead and set both of those equal to 0. So you're going to get c minus 2 equals 0, c plus 1 equals 0. Okay, and so that is going to give you, add the 2, you're going to get c equals 2. Uh, subtract the 1 and negative 1. So you get 2 and negative 1. So now we're going to change c back to co secant of theta. So cosecant of theta equals 2. Cosecant of theta equals negative 1. Now, because cosecant is not on our unit circle, this becomes incredibly difficult. So to make it in really easy, 
what is the reciprocal of cosecant? Sine. So I'm going to change both of these cosecant values to sine by just flipping them. So sine theta, when you flip two, you get one half. And then uh, cosecant theta equals negative one. When you flip that, you just get sine theta stays at negative one because that would just be one over a negative one, which is still a negative one. So now this makes it a lot easier. Makes it a lot easier. So that means then this, that theta, so where is sine theta equal to one half? We're looking at the y value. Sine is positive in one and two. And so that occurs at 30 degrees, which is pi over six. And then where else do I get a positive one half in quadrant two? That's at 150 or five pi over six. Now where is sine theta equal to a negative one? Well, that occurs only one spot, and that is at the quadrantal, 270 degrees, which is equal to 3 pi over 2. And so there you go. So there's your answer. Okay? All right, a couple more, a couple more. Here we go. Number 10, number 10, okay? So we have got... 2 cosine theta squared theta plus 3 cosine theta equals 0, okay? Everything's moved over to one side, written in terms of cosine, so I'm going to say let x equal cosine theta, and so you're going to get this. You're going to get 2x squared plus 3x equals 0. Two terms on the left side there, I'm thinking GCF. They both have an x in common, so I'm going to divide both by x and take that x out. And so when I do that now, that's going to leave me with, inside the parentheses, 2x squared divided by x is just 2x. 3x divided by x is just 3 equals 0. Okay. And so um, now I'm going to set those equal to 0, both of them. You started to make any mistakes here. I don't think I did. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. So um, that is now going to give me x equals 0 and 2x plus 3 equals 0. So when you solve for both of them, you're going to get this. You're going to get x equals 0 and you're going to get x equals a negative 3 halves. Which I'll be honest with you, I think I messed something up. I think that this is supposed to be a negative root 3 over 2. So, I don't know. You, you can stop working on it if you want. I'll just still solve it like it's supposed to be a negative root 3 over 2. I made some typo somewhere. I'm really sorry about that. And so now we're going to have this. We're going to have cosine theta equals 0 and cosine theta equals a negative root 3 over 2. Now, Look at what we're looking at though now, guys. Principal values, okay? 100%. Please remember this for the test, okay? Sine is now restricted when we talk about principal values from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that means quadrant 4 to quadrant 1. Okay, that worked. Cosine is restricted from 0 to pi. Okay, and tangent is restricted from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So the same as sine. So quadrants 4 and 1. Remember, when you go to quadrant 4, okay, quadrant 4, you're going to get a negative angle because you're going clockwise. You can't go counterclockwise to get there. Okay, so cosine, so we're looking zero, we're looking from, sorry, one to two. Where do I get zero? It says it wants it in degrees and radians. I'm just going to write it in degrees this time since we just did a bunch of practice with radians. Okay, and so that occurs at, where is x equal to zero? At 90 degrees. And so my answer, I'm just going to say is 90 degrees there for that because x is equal to 0. Now, negative root 3 over 2, that has to occur in quadrant 2 because cosine is only negative in quadrant 2 at principal values. It's positive in quadrant 1. So I look in quadrant 2 for a negative root 3 over 2 for the x value in the ordered pair, and I see that occurs at 150 degrees. Okay. Number 11, so the first thing I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write everything, well everything's written in, in terms of tan, so I'm just going to say let t equal tan theta, and so now I'm going to get this, 
I'm going to get 3 root 3 times tan theta equals a negative 3. Not tan theta, T, sorry, shoot, shoot, sorry. Sorry, guys, a lot of stuff. Video on the notes today, video on this. So I get 3 root 3T equals a negative 3. And so now I want to isolate that T, so I'm going to divide everything by 3 root 3. All right? So now you've got this. You've got T equals a negative 3 over, and we'll just make it a ne we'll just make the whole thing negative because obviously a negative numerator or a positive denominator makes the fraction negative. And so if you don't have a calculator, again, guys, look how nice this calculator is. I literally have to do this. Fraction button, put a negative out front. 3 over 3 root. 3, hit enter. I don't know why it did that. Oh, did I do the wrong negative sign? Sorry. I did. So you get a negative root 3 over 3. If you don't have that, you have to rationalize. And so remember how you rationalize, you just multiply top and bottom by what is under the radical expression. And so when you do that, you're now going to get this. You're going to get t equals a negative 3 root 3 up here. Okay? This now becomes a 3 times 3 down here because root 3 times root 3 leaves you with a 3 and you already had a 3 down there. And so then that is going to give you this. That's going to give you now t equals a negative 3 root 3 over 9. And now what happens here? The 3 and the 9 simplify to give you 1 and 3. And so you find out that t is equal to a negative root 3 over 3, which then we will change back to tangent. And so we've got now tan theta equals a negative root 3 over 3. Now recall with tangent, principal values, we're in quadrants 1 and 4. Tangent is positive in 1, negative in quadrant 4. Okay. The other thing you need to remember is, is that tangent is equal to y over x. I've said this a million times, it seems like, since we started this unit back before Thanksgiving break. Okay. So the ordered pair that gives you root 3 over 3 okay, is root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. We are looking for the negative version of that, so that's in quadrant 4, which normally would occur at 330 degrees. But since we're going clockwise, what you should do is, is you should take that 330 and you should subtract it by 360. And so when you subtract it by 360, you're going to get that theta is equal to a negative 30 degrees. And that right there is going to be your final answer. Okay, last but not least here, everything's written in terms of secant. So I'm going to say this, I'm going to say let S equal secant theta. Again, guys, you can use whatever letter you want. Okay. And so now let's write out what we have. We're going to have now um, s squared, because that's secant squared, plus 3s equals a negative 2. So I've got s squared and I've got s, two different undefined variables, which means I need to bring everything over to one side. And so I'm going to bring that negative 2 over and then set equal to 0 and factor. And so that's going to give me now s squared plus 3s plus 2 equals 0. Okay, I'm going to go star method now. And so A times C is 2. B, 3. A, 1, 1. And so now I need two numbers. I need two numbers that multiply to give me 2 that add to equal 3. And so that's going to be 2 and 1. And so let's write out our factors now. So again, 2 over 1, that is s plus 2. 1 over 1, s plus 1 equals 0. Now set those both equal to 0, so we're going to have s plus 2 equals 0. I might need to scroll up a tiny bit here so you can see this. And I've got s plus 1 equals 0. And so when you solve for s, 
you're going to get S equals a negative 2 and a negative 1 because you're subtracting the 2 and subtracting the 1. So we're going to go back up here now and we are going to change S back to secant theta. So we've got secant theta equals a negative 2 and secant theta equals a negative 1. Now, could you use the unit circle to determine where that is? Sure. But it's way more difficult. So what I can do is, is I can use, I can change secant to cosine because we know cosine very easily on the unit circle because secant is the reciprocal. So to get cosine, I'm going to take cosine theta and I'm just going to flip that negative two. You don't change the sign, you just flip it. And so now you've got a negative one half for cosine. For secant theta of negative one, very easy. When you flip that, it just ends up being 1 over negative 1, so it stays a negative 1. You do not change the sign, you just flip for the reciprocal. So now where is this true? Okay, so again, I'm dealing with cosine. Cosine only works in quadrants 1 and 2. So I immediately go to quadrant 2. I immediately go to quadrant 2 because I see that they're both negative. So where, what order pair gives me an x value of negative 1 half in quadrant 2? That is going to be 120 degrees. And then where else? Negative 1. The only possible place for that is at 180 degrees for x. And there you go. Well, that wraps it up, guys. Hope uh, this works. Like I said, I want you guys to refer to this. Okay, refer to this when, um, you know, tomorrow in class. Okay? Thanks, guys. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace.